Morning. We are going to look at uh, this passage from an 18th century Enlightenment uh, writer, journalist, and propagandist, Abi Renal. His book, uh, Histoire philosophique et politique des établissements et du commerce des Européens dans le, le Do Indies. Um, Pardon my French pronunciation, but this is a book about philosophy and politics of the establishment of commerce, European commerce into India's. Um, and this is a quotation in Charles Taylor's book. Uh, what is the book? Secular Mind or something like that. Um, I think it is Secular Mind. Secular mind, or what's the book? A uh, secular age. Um, this book uh, in itself is not that good, uh, I think, from uh, Charles Taylor's standard, but he has a lot of good quotations in there. So we looked at uh, another quotation on humanism previously. So we are going to try to understand this quotation from Abi Reynolds' uh, book. Uh, this book was published in 18th century uh, and the book was uh, published anonymously and people had uh, thought that it had uh, Abi Reynolds had help from other Enlightenment fig figure, especially Didro and especially some of the more penetrating quotations of the part of the book uh, they thought were from Pedro rather than Abir and all. And this quotation is one of the quotations which uh, does seem that it might have come from Pedro. Because it squares with his other ideas. Okay, anyway, so uh, at the start there's a bit of paraphrasing from Charles Taylor and then there's a big quotation with French and then English translation. Um, the Abbe Renal in a very influential work makes it clear that conformity and, and this um, passage is uh, important in understanding what I intend to do in this is try to understand. I think this quotation makes clear certain things about the nature of the modern state, the nature of modern secularism. I think these two things are very clear in this passage and I think they are relevant to our present and the present nature of the modern state uh, and also the nature of the secularism and uh, these are the two things which people actually don't uh, understand uh, accurately I think in our parts of the world. So the Abi Renal, in a very influential work, makes it clear that um, the conformity to this modern idea of order, which he called the intro general, that is the general interest, is the supreme principle of civil society. Uh, general interest is the supreme principle of civil society, and by civil society we mean capitalist society, really, as it clear from um, some of the other sessions, uh, some of the other videos we did, and also it's clear from Hegel's work, for example. Hegel clearly uh, recognizes that civil society is a capitalist society, and also Adam Smith, and obviously Hegel was influenced by Adam Smith and other Scottish Enlightenment thinkers. So Abbe, uh, Abbe Reynal in his very influential work makes clear that the conformity to the modern idea of order, which he calls the L'Entretant General, is the supreme principle of civil society. Okay, so... In general interest, an interest in itself uh, defines civil society, and civil society in turn is uh, a capitalist society. So basically, uh, the idea of uh, general interest or interest as such 
defines uh, a capitalist society and a capitalist order. And uh, one way to understand the one way to clearly understand the the demarcation between between society pre-modern society or or medieval feudal christian society feudal christian society and the modern society which we call civil society is by contrasting their certain values, by contrasting their core values and shifting those values. And one of the shifts um, is the rise of the, the rise of the uh, idea of uh, the idea of interest uh, in acceptability because in pre-capitalist society or pre-modern societies interest wasn't uh, something which was considered valuable or of value rather people look down upon those who made uh, the purpose of their life advancement of their interests. What we are talking about is not uh, what people actually did, but what was considered good and what was considered bad in a society, what was considered a legitimate value and what was considered something, a deviation from those values. So interest wasn't it wasn't just that it, interest wasn't the part of the fabric of the constitution of that society as that specific society, but was also looked down as something undesirable or something at least not worthy of uh, central attention. Um, and there were other values, Christian values and feudal values, which were considered, you know. And they were obviously Christian and feudal values. They were both, uh, the values were shaped by the Christian civilization as a whole. And as the Christian civilization declined, uh, Or the period of centuries um, from I don't know, 12th century, 13th century onward until the rise or the dominance of modernity in 18th, 19th, 20th century. Um, the values which were considered uh, desirable on the level of society were. You know love, um, sacrifice, um, valor, I guess, honor, honor was very important. But starting from 15, 14, 15th century onward, different thinkers in different uh, variety of disciplines and variety of uh, backgrounds started promoting the idea that you know what they call passions <laughs> they call those medieval values passions you know love and valor and sacrifice for god or for your society or whatever as passions in 
and they said that these passions lead to war and these passions lead to destruction and instead they started promoting the idea of interest and at the start they were a bit sheepish about it because they knew that interest was looked down upon in a society i'll come in a minute what we mean by interest but as we come to um, Adam Smith and onward, the interest become actually a positive thing. But they start, they said that interest, though it is striving for interest, even though in itself it is not a good thing, but it actually when people strive for their interest, it leads to actually something good for society as a whole. And especially they emphasize that it leads to peace. So they said if people uh, involved in commerce and furtherance and of their interests and this worldly pursuit become their center, this will lead to reducing warfare and this will lead to a society which was a, a more peaceful society. And they said that um, passions which have ruled us uh, to this point, whether they are passion, passion or love of God or love of uh, your society or country or love of your king, they all lead to destruction and wars and all that. So instead we should, even though interest is not that a good thing, like in our estimation, so that was there at the start. They said through, you know, cunning of reason or some hidden... Uh, mechanism it leads to actually something good so when people actually strive for their own selfish to, to fulfillment of their own desires and selfish pursuit it actually leads somehow through some hidden historical mechanism to peace and prosperity and etc that's on that basis they started promoting the idea that society should be based on peace rather than passions or the old values. And as time went on and society went through uh, various transformation over centuries in Europe, interest became something interest became something positive and interest became the corner 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 cornerstone of the society which we consider uh, modern society or capitalist society. And all notions of morality was built on that by various thinkers, you know, in Europe, especially in, in Britain at the start, um, like Hobbes um, and utilitarians after they said that uh, desire is fulfillment of desire is the only good thing and fulfillment of desires leads to pleasure and pleasure is the only good really so the only good is to increase pleasure and decrease pain and what uh, increases pleasure is the fulfillment of desires and what decreases uh, pleasure is the unfulfillment of uh, desires and why our desires are unfulfilled there can be many reasons i mean old society christian society christian civilization talk about limiting desires I said the whole morality based on the concept of if you can't limit your desire, there's no morality. But this uh, modern conception of morality, they say, if you can't fulfill morality, uh, desires, then there's no morality. Because morality is the fulfillment of desires and the pleasure uh, achieve as a conse consequence. And evil is the... 
uh, unfulfillment of desires and the pain <coughs> resulting from that. So the purpose of society is basically to the purpose of society is any state as we'll see is to increase pleasure as a whole and decrease uh, pain or pain and the mechanism and why our desires remain unfulfilled one is obviously ide false ideologies like Christianity and that which ask us to focus on other world and sacrifice for that in this world but the other uh, main reason our desi desires uh, remain unfulfilled is the limitations of our uh, uh, means of fulfilling desire and this is clearly um, um, stated in a new science which was invented by utilitarians and others uh, which is called e economic and this science didn't exist before obviously capitalism capitalism economics is the religion of capitalism is a basic fundamental uh, dogma of capitalism and the basis of economics is that our wants needs and there's no difference there and desires are limitless or undetermined and that's a good thing as against you know Christianity taught that our desires are limitless but that's not a good thing we should and they differentiate between wants and need and desires and need and economics teach us in order to our desires are infinite but uh, our means to achieve those desires are limited and that's what it called a scarcity that scarcity basically creates war and pain and all evil in so the purpose is to overcome scarcity capitalism is overcoming scarcity because scarcity limits human freedom and human limitation of human freedom is something evil uh, because as we saw in other videos so scarcity and how we um, get rid of this scarcity how we transcend this risk that's through capitalism because before capitalism people didn't think that uh, maximizing the fulfillment of desire was a good thing that's why they'd never tried to focus all attention to that but now we have got rid of that uh, false ideology and now we recognize that the only purpose the purpose of society is to make it possible that more and more people can fulfill their desires whatever their desires are so um we need to uh, maximize uh the fulfillment of that to do this is to overcome scarcity and we can do th this through the system called capitalism where the sole purpose of economy and society is to accumulate for the sake of accumulation so accumulate so we can accumulate more and that's how we will eventually overcome scarcity and we will be able to fulfill our desires so interest is basically uh, fulfillment of desires and interest can be particular like my interest or your interest but they can be general like interest as such so although individual uh, search for their own uh, fulfillment of their in own interest the purpose of the state and society is to make sure that interests in general interests of x y z 
are fulfilled. And to do that is to organize the whole means uh, of the society in such a way that only those things are allowed or only those things are preferred or only those th things are prioritized that increase uh, or maximize the general interest. And those things are curbed and banished, which reduce the general interest. And the practical form, this general interest is that what is general interest? General interest is that anyone can fulfill their desires. There shouldn't be any limitation on that. That's the general interest, theoretically. But practically, the way to do this is to accumulate more. So what is good is what hinders accumulation. Uh, what is evil is what hinders accumulation. And what is good is what maximizes this accumulation. Because this maximization of accumulation and its perpetual uh, continuous would make sure that human will one day be able to overcome scarcity. And that is the general interest of a state of humanity. And so that's the doctrine, the main doctrine of modern society. And this is the doctrine on which capitalist society and state are based. And this uh, passage from Abhi General, uh, sorry, <laughs> Abhi Renal, um, makes this clear. Uh, well, we'll read a bit and we'll uh, continue this in the next session, hopefully. So the, the Abhi Renal... Uh, in a very influential works, work makes it clear that the conformity to the modern idea of order, that the state and the society, which he calls general interest general, is the supreme principle of civil society, as I explained. Intra general et la regle de tout ce qui doit subsister dans l'état. The general interest is the rule of everything which should subsist in the state. So the the idea, the con constitutive idea of the modern state is general interest, which theoretically means that there shouldn't be any unfulfilled desires, and which practically means that oh, it's the, the, the supreme principle on which a the, the modern state is based is to promote accumulation, maximize accumulation, and to hinder and destroy anything which is on the way or in the way of that supreme realization of the, the, that supreme principle. The general interest, the rule of everything which should subsist in this state. Okay, so we'll continue from here.